Welcome back uh, to the study session and regular meeting of the Ann Arbor Public Schools Board of Education. We um, are in our second half of our meeting tonight, and this is all about the budget. So, Yay. Dr. Swift, can you give us a tell us something good? <laughs> Very good. Anything? <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Madam President and Trustees. It is that time of year, and yet, if you serve on a board of education or you serve in a cabinet in a school district, every day of the year is that time of year when you're thinking about budget. And trustees, uh, I'm so proud that Mr. Demetri is going to bring you two parts. Um, the first part is providing national and state context for our budgeting this year. And then the second part is really looking at Ann Arbor Public Schools. Um, I know that there will be a tendency among school districts this spring to say that the increase in foundation, student foundation, is really good news. It's happy news. It's a great day in Michigan. And I, I truly don't mean to be the Debbie Downer all the time, but I do think it's important for all of us to remember that according to the 2018 Quality Counts National Nonpartisan Most Recent Analysis of States, Michigan is 34th in funding among uh, the 50 states. So I just want to be very careful um, because we have a long way to go to get to where we need to be. That being said, there, there are some brighter, brighter spots. Um, and what I love about Mr. Demetrio is he will set the table for you so that you understand context. And trustees, we always do this so that when you go to advocate you have the slides, you have the studies, you have the information. Now, he has extracted a few things out of about five presentations that I sent you yesterday. So, um, so he really tried to summarize some of the high points. And, of course, we'll be happy to, to visit as long as you would like. April is our preliminary month. May, we will clarify further. And then, trustees, you know that by law... By June 30th, you must pass a balanced budget for 2018. So this is the first step of three steps that we go through here at uh, the close of our fiscal year. With that, Mr. Dimitri. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Sweet. Good evening, everybody. Um, and we'll start first with the, some of the comments and context around the federal budget and, and where we are. So the administration uh, tried to pass several pieces of legislation, like changing the Affordable Care Act. They were not successful in doing that. They tried immigration legislation. They were not successful with doing that. They promised infrastructure, $1 trillion worth of infrastructure changes. We haven't seen that. We, what we have seen is tax changes. We have seen. So we'll talk a little bit about those tax changes. <clears throat> and another comment is that this administration has had, has had so many scandals so far, their day-to-day -day operations are consumed with dealing with, with those scandals. So, but <clears throat> as far as the tax changes that were passed, they were basically uh, reducing taxes for corporations. Mm -hmm. And the, the impact of that, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it, but it's reducing it for U.S. operations. They're reducing it from 35 to 21 percent, which is a huge tax cut. And then for operations that they have overseas, they're reducing it from 35 percent to zero. So if you think long term, this policy will encourage companies to have operations overseas rather than the U.S. Um, uh, before I, I start, I also want to mention that last week, uh, Ms. Matheson and I were at Michigan School Business Officials uh, annual conference in Detroit. So for three days, we watched registration um, presentations and, and received a lot of knowledge from a variety of sources. So, so these presentations are some of the highlights of the ones that we've seen. And we give uh, 
<laughs> the uh, credit to the, where we received the presentation from. So, so, so on the slides down here. So this one is, was from a professor from Michigan State University. He's an economics professor. So these slides. So this one shows 50 years worth of data in what's happened to the highest bracket income earners from, so people that were earning about 125,000 back in 1967, now they're earning, and this is adjusted for inflation. So this is like 1960, $1967. So now they're earning about 225, almost twice as much as much as they were earning before when it's adjusted for inflation. So then when you look at the, the middle class around 50,000, it hasn't changed. Then when you look at the people that are close to poverty or within poverty, they ha that hasn't changed at all. So the only ones that have benefited is, are the people that, have, that were high earners. And this is, these are results of the tax policies that we have. So <clears throat> what is this tax cut going to cost? It's about, the estimates are about a trillion to a trillion and a half. So this is going to add to our already uh, huge debt deficit that we have. So <clears throat> estimates are, by the end of this year, that our deficit will be uh, approximately 20, the federal deficit will approximately be $22 trillion. Our state deficit of debt would also be an, an additional two trillion. So the U.S. government debt will be about 24 trillion. Now the gross national product or GDP, gross domestic product, what we generate as an economy is approximately 19 trillion. So our debt is higher. So for a person, it would be so you, the average person share of this federal deficit is approximately $64,500. So <clears throat> here you will see um, the estimates for the uh, basically the debt, the federal debt held as portion of the gross domestic product. But if you look what the estimates are and what is actually happening, you'll see that it is, the actuals are a lot higher than what the estimates are. So just to put in perspective, just paying the interest on this debt in 2016 it was $430 billion. So if you think about it, in the state of Michigan, the education budget that we get from the state, it's about 13 billion. Mm -hmm. So this is 430 billion just in interest. It's huge. The general fund of the state is 10 billion. So it's, the whole state of Michigan is 23 billion. <laughs> So now I'm going to move into the state budget and, and give us a little bit of context what's, what's happening uh, and what's happened at the, at the state level. So <clears throat> we have a school aid fund and then we have a general fund. And um, in the school aid fund is to pay for operations for public schools and to maintain a, and support a system of free public elementary and secondary schools as defined or required by the Michigan Constitution. So the top part here was in the House Fiscal Agency. And then the Michigan school business officials added these two items down here in blue because it doesn't just pay for 
public schools, it also pays for community colleges, and it also pays for 15 public universities, which um, this is something new that lasts basically eight years or so. I have to remember the computers over here. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, we, here we're showing um, the amount of money that was available uh, in 2008 and then in uh, 2016 and then uh, which is adjusted for inflation and then you can see the change here. So this is the state taxes that were collected. So then you can see that we're collecting about 1.6 billion less and then where is that change? And when we talked about taxes earlier and, mm -hmm. and here is business taxes, $2 billion. So, mm -hmm. so you can see what, whatever is happening at the federal level is also happening at the state level, where we're collecting less taxes. And this is the general fund. And you can see in 2000, for, so if we're here at 2018, 18 years and there's no, um, there's no increase. In, in how much taxes are collected, and it's primarily due to, um, to tax cuts. And over here, it is primarily, it's a combination of things where the economy and, and, and the tax cuts came in 2011, I believe. So even the economy in Michigan right now, our economy has never been as robust as it is today. But you don't see that in the taxes collected in the general fund. So then this is the relationship between the general fund and the school aid fund. So the, in, in, 2000, in 1994, we passed Proposal A where there were certain promises made that we would go to a state kind of funding and then that the state one would not harm school districts that were highly funded or that communities chose to, to tax themselves to have really good schools. And then also that the effort that the general fund was making towards the school aid fund, which was approximately $665 million, that it would remain the same. But even short time period afterwards, the state started reducing its effort in contributing to the school aid fund from the general fund, and then we'll come to the point now that it's the school aid fund is contributing to the general fund almost $800 million, which is the proposal from the state about $790 million towards, and almost all of it is towards colleges and universities. So what has happened with the foundation? So, and, and you can see in, in, uh, in, in the beginning years, they were called equity payments. Some school districts would get more than other districts. So in, we had a big cut here to the foundation of $470 for school districts around the state. But also in Ann Arbor, we experienced an additional $233 uh, which was uh, part of a foundation. So we experienced uh, approximately seven, uh, over $700 in, in, in cuts to a foundation. So what's being restored is this 30, this 50, this 70, and 60. We're not even close to um, what it was. A foundation in 2009, I believe it was 9,723. A foundation today is 9,290. And even with what is going to be proposed later, we'll, we'll, we will not be at the level we were in 2009. So another issue that we have to uh, contend here in Michigan is the retirement contribution rates that we have to contribute. 
So this chart shows by state, and then you can see Michigan. You can't see really well. Uh, I think that's Michigan, so we're five. So the blue part is what the school district contributes. The orange part is what the employee contributes. So without the 147C, the 147C is the what we call unfunded accrual actuarial liability, or UAAL, of retirement, which is the money that comes in and then the money that goes out. So it's still a retirement cost. So when you include that, we're almost at the top. They we're, we're second, only second to Illinois. And Illinois has extreme issues with their retirement, with their pension system. Um, so um, just to give you something to compare. So our retirement rate, and this is just the employer rate with, um, with the UAL. This is what the school district pays. This does not include what the employee pays. So you can see that about $2,000 per student goes towards the retirement system in Michigan. And then in Florida, 7.2%. Uh, and this is um, basically, we made it into Michigan dollars. So, so you can see the, the extreme difference between Michigan and, and other states. So now that we've kind of set the context of where the federal government is, the state is, so then we <laughs> Those were not good news, but true news. Okay. <laughs> so it was. Not fake news. <laughs> not fake news. <laughs> so, so um, the the House, the Senate, the executive branch have passed their budgets. So we have um, taken and we examined those proposals, and then we took the items that actually affect our school district, because not all the proposals are affecting our, our school district. And then we estimated, <coughs> we, we um, very carefully estimated, and logically we were not too conservative. On the other hand, we were not too liberal at all. So, um, but this shows that the proposals range from $120 to $115 increase to a foundation for us. Other school districts that are lower funded would get $240 or $230. Um, a few years ago, we were mandated to um, give all our testing, uh, our state, state testing uh, via computer, and they gave us some money to do that. So now there's a couple proposals, the executive and at the Senate, to to take that away, it's about 65,000. The house, so the, the, the house uh, keeps it. Um, then in MEPSERS, this does not have any impact on our bottom line because uh, it's one of those things that was a one time for, it's, and it's an in and out. So it's on our revenues and expenditures. So you'll see it uh, being eliminated in, in both areas. So, um, so then we also took whatever the other knowledge we, we, we know that are not going to be included in the budget next year because it was a one-time one -time event or um, in, in this case, we, we know that this year in 1718, so we took a current budget, and then we're just adjusting for all the changes, uh, and that's what we're doing here. So on the local side, we know that this year uh, we, we have in the budget uh, about $2.4 million for uh, cell tower income, also had an easement of $1.1 .1 million, and also a rent settlement for Go Like the Wind. So those three items will not be there next year. So the impact would be a negative three point, almost $3.8 million. We have an election on May 8th. Mm -hmm. 
If we pass it, then we expect that the income that we're losing this year will be restored next year. So on the local side, these two items are approximately $2.4 million. On our foundation, we took our current enrollment that we have. So if it's 120, we get about 2 million 123,000 more dollars. If it's at $115, then we get up a little bit less at 2,035,000. $2, so uh, 2 million, what did I say? 2,000. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be funny, sorry. <laughs> um, so on, these, on, the, on the state, so we're trying to calculate on, on, on the state revenue, what are all the changes that, that we're expecting? So if uh, the foundation increase, this is the 120 or 115, then we expect our enrollment to increase by approximately 240 students. And that is a combination of what's been happening in the last four years, plus what we have received from the architects uh, where they expect us to be five years, about 1,500 students more, and that's basically just based on housing in the city. And um, about 65% of our tax base is in the city. The other 35% is in townships. Mm -hmm. So there's a significant portion of, um, of, um, of our tax base that is, that is in the townships. Uh, also, we know that we receive, or we have in our schools, about 85% of the students. So, so if you take that 1,500 that was just in the city, and you, <clears throat> over five years, so that would be 300 a year, and then you use that 85%, you're a little bit higher, you're about 255. So uh, I know that this year we increased by approximately 232, mm -hmm. so we're about, so we're using about 240. So by using the 240, uh, $8,400 per student, then we expect another $2 million uh, increase. And, and why 8,400, sorry? So it's some of the students are from- School of choice. Schools of choice, and it's a combination of those two. Okay. And, and the schools of choice, they're going up by 240 yeah. primarily, and we're going up by 120, so it's- yeah. It's a different number than we've used in the past. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I should have prefaced, this is very, very preliminary. Mm -hmm. So, uh, these numbers, we're going to be adjusting these numbers as we go in, into June. So, we already know uh, with special education funding from the state, we get paid a year behind. We know the expenses, um, we know approximately how much our expenses are going to be this year. So this is the additional, what we expect to get additional from the state. Also, this is where we talked about the $65,000. We already talked about this $2.7 million. Mm -hmm. And also, we received this year approximately $3.8 million for tax base adjustments that go back to, I believe, 2012 all the way to 2017. So there were several years of tax base adjustments that the state owed us money and they paid us this year. So basically from the state, we expect our revenues to be reduced by these figures, depending on which proposal passes. And so in total, we also expect, I'm sorry, to receive additional Act 18 money because we have more special education costs. And the Act 18 money, we get paid two years behind. So we already know those costs from last okay. year, and, and we expect that we will get a, a little bit over a million dollars more from, from Act 18. And so overall, we expect our revenues to be lower by a little bit over $2 million. Now let's go to the expenditures. So again, in our expenditures, we have tried to include everything that, that we know right now. So we know we have 
certain uh, collective bargaining agreements that next year, no matter what the fund balance is, they will still get uh, a raise. So that is included here. Mm -hmm. We also know that we estimated a health care increase of approximately uh, 5%. Uh, and actually yesterday I had a meeting with, uh, so we know like the, the first six months um, because our health care will change January 1st, right. not July 1st. So we know the number is approximately correct. Um, for the first six months, but also a significant portion of it will be paid by employees versus the school district. So there's some things that we, we have to work out. Um, our retirement rate is going up, and, that is, uh, and that's already been published and so forth, so we've increased that. Um, then we have contracts that have cost of living allowances. So we estimate approximately a couple hundred thousand dollars. Then the, the elimination of, we already talked about this, and <clears throat> this year, we've, when we pay back the 3% the refund from EPSIS, we had to pay about a half a million dollars. We, most of the payments have paid out. Some of the retirees and stuff we haven't received. Uh, we have about 1,000 people that we haven't received their paperwork yet out of the 2,000. So we're going to keep working on it, uh, but we should not have this expenditure next year. So also we estimate that we have, we have usually 50 to 60 teacher retirements, and then when we hire, we hire at a lower rate. So the, there's some savings. So our expenditures, we expect our expenditures to be approximately right now $3.3 million. This is what we're estimating right now. We, we're, the budget that we have right now, uh, we have a fund balance we expect to end this year with approximately $18 million. So when the change in uh, our addition or reduction to our fund balance at this point where we are today, we expect that to be approximately 700 or 760, uh, between 600 and, and 760,000 reduction at this point. So this is where we expect to end up today. There's going to be a lot of changes between now and in June, uh, but this is a very, very uh, preliminary numbers. So looking, we wanted to bring, here is a foundation in, in 2009, and then this is where we are today, and these are the proposals, uh, the executive, the Senate, and the House. Um, where we're going to be. So we're still, even if the, the higher amount, the 120 passes, we're still over $300 less than, and this is not adjusted for inflation. This is just, um, you know, straight dollars. So then when you adjust for inflation, we were at 11,000, and then next year we're projected at 9410. So you can see that our purchasing power has been reduced by 20% or so. Mm -hmm. So where do we go from here? So mm -hmm. we will continue to analyze, uh, it, and, and we know we're going to have a May consensus conference on May 16th. Um, so after the May consensus conference, then the three chambers will get together and, and hopefully uh, negotiate mm -hmm. an agreement. We know this is an election year, and um, based on what we heard last week, uh, which was the first time I've heard from the Senate Fiscal Agency say that they know they will have the money to pay for this. Mm -hmm. Every other year that I've, and I've been in public schools since 1997, Every other year that I've been, they have said, we'll see. Mm -hmm. This year they said, we will have it. Uh, they're pretty sure that they will have the money to pay for whatever the three proposals are, which is good news. So uh, we will continue to develop this budget, and we, as we get new information, we will adjust. And, and, uh, so 
after tonight, I, I know on, on we will have a notice calling for a public hearing on the budget on May 9th. Then the first briefing and public hearing will be on May 23rd. And then we will also do a final amendment on our current budget. And also a second briefing and approval of the budget on June 13th and June 27th. So those are our next steps. And that concludes my presentation. I think we're just so excited and elated that it's hard <laughs> to tell. contain ourselves. I mean, I, I think the story you're telling tonight, beyond the Ann Arbor story, and we, we do have a millage vote coming up. This has been a big part of our strategy as a board to protect the Ann Arbor Public Schools from this. This is what the state would have us do. We have tried to make that not the lived experience in Ann Arbor. So please vote on May 8th. This is an important way to do our best to mitigate that. that this disinvestment in public education in the state of Michigan is the biggest threat to Michigan's future, period. There isn't a bigger threat. We can talk about potholes and infrastructure and healthcare costs, but there is nothing more condemning for the next 10, 20, 30 years to our state than what we've been doing for the past two decades in this state. And that picture tells a thousand, I mean, it, it says it all. Mm -hmm. we, nobody's disinvested in public education at the rate that we have, and we have the student achievement performance to, uh, to tell the story of what we've been able to accomplish. We're doing everything we can in this community, in this district, to make that not what our kids experience, so that they might have a bright future. but. Make no mistake, what Mario's just went over, the pressure is enormous and there's, it feels insurmountable. So this is part of our work together as a community is to make this an approachable problem that we can do our best to mitigate against. That's, that is our strategy, making Ann Arbor a great place to be, to work, to educate your kids, doing everything we can to raise money locally, having strong programs, arts, music, not cutting those things when we could have. $703 per student that was cut in the span of a year and a half. That was our experience. Um, being able to have something like the National Music Award that we've now won 17th year in a row, that's a huge testimony to the work that all these people do in this room and beyond um, to protect this district from what many in this state, unfortunately, uh, are subject to, but I, it's disheartening, is all I can say. It's disheartening and shameful. So I'm hoping we'll have different people sitting in seats in Lansing that understand the basic direct correlation between what you invest in education and its impact on the economy. That billion dollars that Rick Snyder passed when he first got in office as a tax break to businesses has been that was an enormous cut. That was the $470 per student. And then the cutting of the 20J funds, the $233 per student that Ann Arbor felt that nobody else in our county has the experience of, we have yet to catch up. Whereas every other district in our county is now back to where they were before those cuts happened because mm -hmm. of the, the um, the 2x formula. So yes. every time the, st the Senate and House and Executive Office say we'll, we'll pass 120 to 240 dollars per student, we're the 120. Everyone else gets twice as much as we do. That's 2x. We're the one. They're, we're the multiple. <laughs> They're multiplying by two for everybody else. So um, it's it's disheartening. I guess is kind of but I'm proud of the work that we've done as a district and a community to keep Ann Arbor Public Schools somewhat protected from otherwise the story that is before us. So thank you for that super happy story. <laughs> um, thank you, Mario. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank very you very much. much.